Recipe for Action with the Chesapeake Children's Museum. The Little Red Hen makes a pizza, a whole wheat pizza. Retold by Philemon Sturges, illustrated by Amy Walrod. The Little Red Hen had eaten the last slice of her tasty loaf of bread. She sipped a cup of chickweed tea and taken her nap. Now she was hungry again. So she scratched through her cupboard and spied a can of tomato sauce. Why don't I make a lovely little pizza? She said to herself. She rummaged through her pan drawer. There were bread pans, cake pans, muffin pans, frying pans, all kinds of pans. But not one single pan was large and round and flat. Cluck, she said. I need a pizza pan. She stuck her head out the window. Good morning, she called. Does anyone have a pizza pan? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Meow. Very well, then. I'll fetch one myself, said the little red hen. So she went to the hardware store. She bought a pizza pan, a large mixing bowl, a pizza slicer, and some other stuff. When she got home, she opened the cupboard. She saw beans and rice, sugars and spices, jars of jam, and jars of honey, and even pickled eggplant. But no flour. Cook! She said, I need flour. She stuck her head out the window. Hello, she said. Who will run to the store and get me some flour? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the cat. Meow. Not I, said the dog. Very well, then. I'll fetch them myself, said Little Red Hen. So she went to the supermarket. She bought some flour, some salt, some oil, and some other stuff. When she got home, she opened the fridge. Cluck, she said. There's cream cheese, blue cheese, string cheese, and Swiss cheese, but no mozzarella. So she stuck her head out the window. Excuse me, she said. Will you go to the store and buy me some mozzarella? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Meow. Very well, then. I'll fetch some myself, said Little Red Hen. So Little Red Hen went to the delicatessen. She bought some mozzarella, pepperoni, and olives some mushrooms, onions, and garlic, a can of small anchovies, and some other stuff, but no pickled eggplant. When she got home, the little red hen put on her apron and stuck her head out the window. Good afternoon, she said. Who will help me make some pizza dough? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Meow. Very well, then. I'll make it myself, said Little Red Hen. So she put the flour and some other stuff into her mixing bowl and stirred and mixed and mixed and kneaded and kneaded and pounded until she had a big ball of pizza dough. After the dough rose, the Little Red Hen rolled it flat and folded it and rolled it again and spun it around her head several times. When the dough was just right, she tossed it way up in the air one last time for good luck and put it in her pizza pan. Then she stuck her head out the window. Excuse me, she said. Who will help me make the topping? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Meow. Very well, then. I'll make it myself, said Little Red Hen. So she chopped and grated and grated and sliced. Next, she opened her can of tomato sauce and spread it all over the pizza dough. 
On top of that, she put some grated mozzarella, some sliced pepperoni, and some chopped olives, some mushrooms, some onions, and garlic. Eight small anchovies and some other stuff. But no pickled eggplant. The little red hen looked at her pizza. It looked just right. She put it in the oven and sat down to sip a cup of chickweed tea. Pretty soon, a delicious smell drifted from the oven. It filled the room and floated out the window. My lovely little pizza must be ready, she thought. It was lovely, but it was not little. So she stuck her head out the window. Good evening, she said. Would anybody like some pizza? Can you guess what the duck said? Can you guess what the dog said? Can you guess what the cat said? Meow. They all said yes, of course. But the cat scraped most of the topping off his chair. When the pizza was all gone, the little red hen made herself another cup of chickweed tea. Then she asked, Who will help me do the dishes? Now, can you guess what the duck, the dog, and the cat each said? They each said, I will. Meow. I will. Quack, quack. I will. And they did. The end. Let's make healthy choices with nutrition. Let's try a pita pizza delicious dinner with whole wheat pita breads. We can make bubbly pasta parmigiana with whole wheat pasta. Do you like ice cream? Finish the night with some mock ice cream. Good healthy ice cream before bed. Strega Nona, an old tale retold and illustrated by Tommy Di Paola. In an old town in Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Strega Nona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went because Strega Nona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands, and she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Streganona was getting old, and she needed someone who could help her keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. And Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her, and you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Streganona, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable, and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work, and Streganona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over the pasta pot. She sang. Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. 
boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Then Stregonona sang, Enough, enough pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot, so simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't see Streganona blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. And this is what happened. The next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that could cook all by itself. You'd better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said, such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry. And that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook. And then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought. Because two days later, Streganona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden feed the goat and milk her, and for your lunch, there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Streganona, said Big Anthony, but inside he was thinking, my chance has come. As soon as Streganona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony, and he ran to the town square, jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone, get forks and plates and platters and bowls, pasta for all at Streganona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Streganona's, the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pot was never empty. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, enough, enough, Pasta pot, I have my pasta nice and hot, so simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside, and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to the compliments from everyone that he didn't notice the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house and was coming out the door. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but the pasta kept on pouring from it. Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover and Big Anthony as well and spilled on the floor of Streganona's house. Stop, yelled Big Anthony. But the pasta did not stop 
and if someone hadn't grabbed poor big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road and all the people were running to keep ahead of it. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. We are lost, said the people. And the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have had Streganona not come home from down the road after her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what had happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses. And with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, thank you, thank you, Streganona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Streganona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta for my magic pasta pot, Streganona said and I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. So, start eating. And he did. Poor Big Anthony. The end. There are even healthy choices we can make with fun activities. There are some fun activities that we can do right before bed. We can make a starry night for the bottom. Bedtime yoga and meditation can be calming, clear your mind, and may help us sleep well. Yoga started in India a long, long time ago. Yoga makes you feel good and helps you grow. Yoga means the union of spirit, body, and mind, and you will realize how to make them aligned. Yoga keeps you limber, balanced, and strong and you can enjoy yoga all year long. Yoga can be done together in any kind of weather. Even on a rainy day, yoga is fun to play. Or out in the sun, yoga can be fun. Yoga has poses for our body to do and breathing to focus our minds too. Yoga teaches us that happiness comes from inside it's up to you to enjoy the ride. Mountain pose is standing straight and strong. Can you do it? How long? Rockets are really fast. Stretch your arms up high. It's a blast. Half moon is bending side to side, making you feel good inside. For your next yoga pose, bend at your waist and grab your big toes. Be a warrior for peace, love, and joy. It is good for every girl and boy. Can you reach up high to make a tree? Keep one foot on the ground. Whoopee! Can you be a frog? How about down dog? 
Let's play cat cow and say moo and meow. Crocodile is a pose when you balance on your fingers and toes. Superman is super fun. Keep it up, we're almost done. Triangle is where you go to make your energy flow. Roll to your back and grab your feet. Happy baby pose is really neat. Sit with your back straight. It's time to meditate. The love you feel will always be there. So be calm without a care. Yoga leaves us blessed with grace and joy. So every moment we enjoy. Every good deed becomes a seed. Creating a better place for the whole human race. Now it's time to deeply relax. Release all thoughts and lie on your backs. Remember this deep inner peace you feel inside. You can feel this way again whenever you decide. Now it's time to rest. You will like this pose the best. Cover up to protect from the chill. See how long you can lie perfectly still. Keep breathing long and deep. Soon you will enjoy a well-deserved sleep. Healthy choices for our new healthy lifestyle. Getting good sleep is an important healthy choice. Eating well at dinner and mixing in calm, soothing bedtime activities can help your body release, relax, and REM. This is when your brain grows. Recipe for action through nutrition, activities, and lifestyle.